Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. Today I'm going to be painting a beautiful baby ostrich all the way from Atosha. So let's roll that intro. Let's see how we get on. Okay, a very warm welcome back to you all to the painting channel. Now, as I said just now, I'm going to be painting this lovely little baby ostrich that I saw a long time ago on one of my many trips with my wife Catherine into Atosha and also into Namibia. Now, this little fella was running along the dusty road with all of his siblings staying well out of the reach of mum and dad when he should be seeking shade. And they were having lots of fun. But I always felt that I wanted to paint the picture. I always felt that I wanted to do a slightly larger canvas with several of them in and create the atmosphere of them having all this fun. I've never gotten around to it. But one of the things when you are doing that or planning a canvas is literally in the work planning that canvas you can't just go straight in plunk a few birds in and expect it to work it does take thinking about not just the relationships for the birds and the subject matter but also the color and the and the different things that you need to bring into that the background the foreground so part of that process is maybe doing one or two little color studies and that's exactly what i want to show you tonight how i created this little study of a baby ostrich in preparation and planning for maybe a bigger canvas sometime in the future. Don't ask me when I will do it. I will do it, but this is just a stepping stone to that. And I hope you enjoy it. So without further ado, let's jump right in and see what happens. Okay, so first things first, then let's just take a quick look at the color on the palette. I'm sorry about the glare from the light over there. There's not an awful lot I can actually do about it. But the colors are pretty much all Michael Harding colors. I've been using Michael's colors for many, many years now. And with the exception of a few Windsor & Newton, I use no others. So I've got Burnt Umber and Burnt Sienna and Raw Sienna. I have Indian Red, Thalo Cyanine Green, Ultramarine Blue, Cobalt Blue, King's Blue Deep. Now, sometimes I also have a Thalo Cyan in blue as well. But today I've just got this one. Uh, magenta, Cadmium Red Light, Cadmium Orange, Cadmium Yellow, or the Medium Yellow, and the uh, Cadmium Lemon. And this one is one called Jean Brilliant from Windsor & Newton. Do love this color. It's a little bit like Naples Yellow, but it's just got a bit more punch than Naples Yellow. I love it. And of course, I've got two areas here of titanium white. I sometimes have a warm white. I sometimes have zinc white. But this time, I'm just going to use the two. And as for brushes, well, let's just take a quick look at the brushes, shall we? Now, all of these brushes are by the one person that you know I use her brushes all the time, Rosemary and Company. And although there are some different ones here, these are mainly all evergreen. And these are a Shiraz, and this one is an Ivory. Now, they're all great brushes, and I just happen to prefer the spring that you get uh, for painting in the Evergreen brush. As for the type, well, you can see I've got examples of almost all types here. I've got long filberts and flats. I have daggers. I have another longer, wider flat, and again with a filbert. I have a small pointed round. I have a very stumpy or becoming stumpy filbert. I have, of course, a trusty rigger and uh, well, one or two others, but they are all here. And whether or not I use them all on this demonstration, I don't know. But they are available to me should I wish to pick one up and use it. So now what I will say, if you go onto Rosemary's website and take a look at what she's got to offer, whether it's an oil, acrylic, or a watercolor brush, it doesn't really matter. But if you do buy any, when you go to the checkout, just put my name in block capitals, Paul Apps, 
and that will be fantastic in the affiliate link section on checkout. That would be great, and that gives me a little thank you from Rosemary for promoting these. But like I always tell you guys, I never ever promote anything that I have never used. Um, companies do call me up, but I but I promote this and push that. Unless I've used it and like it, I won't do that. And I've been using Rosemary brushes for, I don't know, more years than I care to remember. I was very early on with Rosemary and uh, yeah, just great brushes and a great company. So they sell all over the world. So don't be worried about going online, checking it out and placing your orders. But don't forget that affiliate link will be great. Thank you. Anyway, okay, let's get on. Now my drawing is going to be fairly general. I don't want to put great detail in general. Now I'm gonna draw with some burnt sienna, a little bit of the liquid, just to push it around a little bit. Now I want to make some fairly general shapes. And if you look at our bird, we've got sort of our back, or its back, sorry. You don't want it so high. But fortunately, it's not like its mum and dad with a huge great neck. Um, so you can put that sort of in there somewhere. Just change up to slightly darker. We've got two parts to the beak that we can see. The upper mandible is extended upwards, and he's got a little bit of a gape into his mouth. For the, you see the lower one. It's very crude right now, and that's fine. I'm not no problems with that whatsoever. I just want to plot this, and if it takes a bit of time to do that then it really is well worth that time spent to make sure you've got the drawing about where you're looking or hoping for it to be. to see how that goes. I'm worried that he's getting a little bit too long, but I think we're still in good shape. sure we can then proceed on and I'm going to come in and I'm going to block in now quite a bit of the background colors and probably going to be using quite a bit of the Jean Brilliant, quite a bit of white into that, quite a bit of the um, liquid to make it all move around. But I think I also want to make a little bit of yellow, a little bit of orange into it too. That's a little too much and I'm using the word little an awful lot of times but I just want to try and get that right sort of look in the color
going to come back in with my blue, lots of ultramarine blue, as you can see, and I'm going to come in with my umber, a little bit of the burnt sienna too, just to give that a very rich, dark, warm colour, but very contrasty. There we go, I'm going to bash that in around his back here, like that, and that will come down and fade away almost to nothing. I'm going to bring it down the side of his neck. I just wanted to suggest that sort of softness in the plumage moving forward. I'm going to come in with a bit of yellow to that, a little bit of that Jean Brillant, mix that down instead of white, and that will give me a, a slightly different hue to the whole thing, and give me a bit of light, a little bit of reflected light underneath the tummy here, like that. into the outside paint just so they sort of blend away you know and just some of these darks they are a little less obvious here but just a few taps in the back there suggesting these harder quills and spinier I think I'm guessing they are I don't know for sure Okay, so where are we from here? Well, I think I'm going to put in a nice bit of raw sienna across the top of the head here. I'm just going to put a little tap up the back there, a bit of yellow ochre, 
And another color that I actually forgot about can be quite interesting. It's quite dull to look at because it's a total transparent, but it's transparent oxide of yellow. Well worth keeping in the background. And so I think with this bird, it just might work a little bit. We'll see. Okay, I'm going to wet up my rigger now. And I'm going to play around with some of the ochre. Bring that down here. Very strong color yellow, as you can see. I'm going to be ready to take it off to some of these other colors just to knock it around a little bit and make sure that it's not too vibrant. Let's just come back, making lots of little color pots there. I just want to play around now with some of these sort of shapes into the background. A little bit too wet. Let's take some of that away. Mix some more paint to it. Just got a little bit too much of the liquid going on there. forward a little bit more information through here it's a little cooler the color through there just into that area coming down across there it's a little bit light we'll get rid of that pick some of that up and hopefully as much as I can't tell which leg goes on what side I'm hoping by the end of this you guys won't either I will, as always, put the reference to this little fella on my Patreon. So it's free to download, as are all my um, reference materials on my on my Patreon. Just pop on over there. You don't need to be a patron to download this, but download it. And uh, if you are my patrons watching this and listening to this, I do apologize. A bit of advertising in your video. <laughs> You're getting the full version of this, of course. Um, so I hope you're enjoying the blow by blow. Okay. Hopefully we're starting to make it feel very, very fluffy. I seem to feel that it is, gotta say. And it is great combinations between these sort of bluey greens of the uh, Sienna and the King's Blue Light working with the more yellows and the darks that we've got. I think that's what's really making this work in this way.
there's lots of little shadowy effects there is actually a cast shadow of a blue color around the eyes itself so let's just bring that into play i'm going to replace some of this with some more bluer values here a little bit around there and in here that's good I mean, down here, I've got it quite red because we painted it, of course, with a different color. So I'm just replacing that now with some sort of cooler blue shades of color that suggests that it's a pale fur that's actually in shadow. Okay, I've taken a few minutes to look at it and I, there's a couple of little bits that I'm not too sure about. One of them is I just want to add in a bit more yellow to a little bit of this under here. It's just gone a little bit dull. I'm going to come in with some deliberate yellow ochre, almost untouched, just to tap in some little ideas of yellowness. That makes any sense still not even a word is it yellowness but there you go lightening up some of this under here as well a little bit more of a yellow cast now i'm not actually painting any feathers with this i'm just dabbing it in and where it shows it will unite with another area and it will just start sending the brain the message that it is a lot warmer uh, with ochres under there and I think that's what it needed just to lift it a little bit under here too wouldn't go amiss. There's nothing in the middle there, I just realized. That's the big dark area. So let's just 
tweak that a little bit but it doesn't want too much because it isn't as light as other places but it just wants something in there yeah, I'm gonna have to do it I think all right job almost <laughs> almost job I can't stop I never do I always go too far sometimes I wish I hadn't gone that far at the end of it There we are. There we go. One signature, one painting. Had a lot of fun with it, gotta say. Really enjoyed it. And it was nice to get my teeth into doing a nice wildlife oil painting for you guys to enjoy and learn from. All right, so there we go. Okay, everybody, one baby ostrich completed. I hope you enjoyed it just as much as I enjoyed painting it for you. And it doesn't get much better than doing oils and combining that with wildlife painting. It's my roots. It's where I came from. And to be able to get back into it a little bit more now, now I'm in my new studio, is doesn't get much better than that. So look forward to painting an awful lot more wildlife pieces for you over the coming months, even years. So look out for those but if you've enjoyed this content and i really hope you have then please why don't you pop over to the patreon if you want to learn a little bit more there is a specific oil painting tier just for you guys to look at all the oils the full version of this little ostrich will be over there as well to enjoy so why not take a trip over Get the reference and have a go at this yourself. But while you're not, while you're there, why not take a trip round and look at the Patreon? You might just want to get involved, and I'd love to welcome you as my latest patrons. But if you have made it this far, you've enjoyed the content, then please why not consider subscribing? It costs you nothing to do it, but it does really help the channel grow. It's a young channel, and it needs a lot of promotion, and that promotion comes from people like yourselves who subscribe, like and click that bell icon and also add comments and share the video to friends who they think might like the content. So yeah, do all of those things that would really would help and I'd welcome it. Thank you so, so much. And until the next time, I'm gonna say cheerio. I've had a lot, I wanna get on and do some more, <laughs> gotta be said. So join me for the next video and I'm not sure when it'll be, I'm trying to make them more regular right now, but join me soon for another one. Catch you all soon, everybody. Take care, stay safe, happy painting wherever you are. Bye-bye.